there's, there's a lot to talk about. I don't know in 20 minutes how much we can cover, but I'll try my best. I'm not going to show any slides because uh, I couldn't find any uh, pitch, picturesque ways to kind of communicate uh, the, uh, the 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 what what basically happened over there. So I just I just have my slideshow on the side, and we can just like look at our faces and maybe have some bit of interaction. As we do the stock or dialogue, that's more what I'd like to be. Um, so, does anyone know what the story of Fatima is like? So, we'll, we'll start it from there. Like, anyone know? Have any, any of you seen the movies? Like, there's so many movies on on the Fatima story. Um, anyone, anyone know? Just even like just from general reading, or maybe has anyone been there? I haven't literally been there now. Um, I got a chance to go there once. Um, oh, did you know- Yeah. Um, I know there's three children involved in the story, but I forgot their names. Um, mm-hmm. I know they're all like really young children, like I think that all of them are like nine, ten, eleven years old. Yeah, and the rest of the story, I don't know, <laughs> I completely forgot the story. <laughs> yeah, so Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucy. Uh, and Lucy was the girl whom Mother Mary was speaking to, and the other two are her cousins. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Any, any, anyone else, any other? Anyone else know anything else about Fatima? What was happening over there? I'm not sure, but if this is the same story, then I think they told the people, but people did not believe them. And then they would go to the place and pray every time. And then to prove it to people, they called everybody and they said she would appear here. And when mm-hmm. they prayed, at first she didn't. And then when she appeared, everybody saw her. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the, there was all of that unbelief and the the kids kind of being ridiculed at their age um they were they had gone through many other persecutions also uh, for what they believe uh yeah anyone else the so our lady people. asked the children to pray the rosary and to spread the devotion of the rosary um especially for an end to i don't know if you could see me an end to communism um uh, because russia was going to be taken over by communism and um, what else oh yeah then at the very last like the, our lady asked the children to come at the, to this place and pray um on the 13th of every month and then on the very last apparition it was made 13th which is tomorrow and there was the miracle of the dancing sun so a lot of people it was a very spectacular miracle and a lot of people came to believe in yeah, well, the ch- yeah, as as I don't know who spoke before, but yes, people didn't believe the children because they couldn't see Our Lady, but um, they once they saw that they believed the children, and yeah, yeah, very good, very good, Jennifer. So uh, the six app, so there were six particular apparitions that happened, and it was every thirteenth of every month. It actually started May thirteenth, so uh, tomorrow is when the f- the first apparition of Our Lady happened. And the miracle of the dancing sun that Jennifer mentioned was uh, the 13th of October. That was the that that was the month when um, the the final apparition happened, where about seventy thousand people, um, or more than that, kind of saw this 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 miracle. And I think uh, the when we read when I read this, maybe and there's a small video also. I hope I might be able to share it also. Uh, uh, that shows what happens over there also so we can we'll see the whole thing like and we'll see what it means okay so just just the, that's just theology of just uh, uh, God appearing or saints appearing there it's kind of divided into two categories uh, so one falls under this term called apparitions and the other is called mysticism um, you might we might just touch on mysticism like you might have heard like of certain people maybe just going into a trance and then they 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 themselves hear God's voice to them. So this would be like um, uh, a person who is having persevered in a Christian spiritual life, uh, usually, usually, usually for a long period of time, uh, receives by God's free choice again to be infused of a supernatural grace of contemplative prayer. So that's kind of mystic, that's a mystic. Um, and basically, through this grace, they are granted a deeper knowledge and experience of God, beyond which the ordinary ways of prayer or Christian life can give. Okay, so it's a bit more of a deeper way of uh, in your own prayer life, where uh, through God's grace you might be able to reach a place. That's called a mist. That, that's a mystic, like or a mysticism. And then there's this other one, which is a par- apparitions. 
that's actually a charismatic gift. Um, so like charismatic gifts, if you remember the talk on charisms, charismatic gifts, they're actually not meant for the person, but they are meant for the people, for the people of God. Um, so this is an apparition of charismatic gift granted by God for some greater purpose uh, of his that will benefit th uh, than the benefit to the one who's receiving it. So more than as Roshan shared, the three um, children who were there, uh, this, uh, this apparition was for the whole world. Uh, through this apparition, Mother Mary uh, wanted to communicate a deeper message, like uh, to the whole world. So that's that's the just just to, just if you ever hear like you know what's the difference between the two? That's 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 that, and it's apparitions that happened in um, in Fa in Fatima. Okay, um, so in the case of Fatima, uh, as I said, it's it, it's more than an intellectual vision that took place. It was an external apparition accompanied by um in indications of an actual presence of our lady okay um as a fruit of the events um and of the fidelity of the three children to the message of fatima um lucy uh, lucia sorry lucia uh, francesco and jacinta they grew in holiness and they became mystics in the proper sense so they grew especially uh, Luce, uh francesco and jacinta passed away uh, and even the message with our lady that was mentioned also. Uh, they passed away a year later, um, a year or two years later. Um, and I will touch on that also. It was, at, well, if maybe I might forget it, so I might just say it also. It was a uh, hundred years ago, there was another pandemic that happened in the world. Um, you might've heard of that when COVID came, like, oh, there was a similar pandemic like this. Like, uh, So they both passed away during that time. like. Um, and it was through prayer um, that, that they were they both had the influenza, but they both passed away in that sense. Um, but they, uh, but Lucy or Lucia uh, remained. Um, and as Mother Mary said, she would remain. She said that the other two, uh, Jacinta and uh, Francesco would be called uh, to heaven, but Lucia would remain. And she asked, will I be remaining alone? She said, no, I'll also be with you. And I need you to communicate uh, this message of Fatima uh, through your life um, uh, so that more people come into the Immaculate Heart of Mary, okay? Um, and I think uh, the fundamental thing about maybe if you, if you even forget it, everything else, like it's more than what just happened over there. I think what the church honors is it is the heroic virtue in the pursuit of God that these um, these young children had um, that raised them to the altar. So Jacinta and uh, uh, Francisco are saints and uh, Lucia, uh, Lucy, I think is a servant of God uh, or a blessed. I don't think she's a saint yet. Um, um, uh, they, and the church honors, it's not just because they received these apparitions. That's not why they became saints. But in their life, as I said, with the influenza, and all the other um, sufferings that they went through, especially even um, uh, Lucia uh, went through in that li life period for the message that they received. Um, they were still pursuing God in its, in in the, in that sense uh, that they that they became you know that they became saints like, and uh, and that's that's what authenticates this message of Fatima more than even the miracle that happened of the sun over there. Okay. So just actually before, before the the three children had the apparitions, there was uh, there was another apparition. Does, did anyone hear about that actually? Uh, what's actually called? So this happened in 1916 in the spring. Uh, was the first of these apparitions by the angel of Portugal. So an angel actually visited the three children in 1916. So it started at the summer. That was the first time the angel visited them, and then two other occasions preparing them for this visit of, of um, Mother Mary that's going to later happen the year, the, the next year. So the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I am the angel of peace and to pray with me. And the prayer uh, that um, he, uh, so he knelt down and then the children also knelt down with him. And he said is, my God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. And he asked them to repeat this prayer every time that they come to the hill. So it's usual for that age, for children at that age to kind of go with their uh, past, you know, like the, the sheep 
to these uh, lands to kind of so that the sheep can feed and get fed and all that like the children what they used to do is they always used to go over there they used to play they used to do this and that and then they also used to say the rosary at that time like say mid mid off, mid uh, uh, midday they'd say the rosary and then they'll have their lunch and then they may continue on the play uh, continue playing on like but at this particular uh, spring of 1916 the angel visited the three children after they said their rosary and said do not be afraid i am the angel of peace pray with me and they prayed this prayer and he said to pray in this in uh, pray in this way and the heart of jesus and mary are ready to listen to you so then so they were children they listened to this and they were like were a bit startled by you know by <laughs> by seeing an angel in front of them uh, and even lucia in her later letters is when we know about most of these things like you know what happened over there she was saying it was different when the angel came than when mary came because mary's presence allowed her to speak but the angel's presence was really uh, more like you just fall into place because of the holiness or the awe in which you're in front of like you know um uh, so she was and that's also noted like and there was a bit of a reading about that when i read it also it's like oh that that even though mother mary is seen as higher than the angels uh what in in its theology say that because the angels are so just in heaven they don't have a human body as such uh when a human eye meets an angel you just automatically fall like that like you just prostrate and you easily can confuse that that vision uh, or that presence of an angel of you just being in heaven itself like okay um okay and then the next one the angels came were in 1916 summer and the angel said again what uh, these go the, the guys were just playing around and they were not praying so uh the angel said what are you doing you must pray pray the hearts of jesus and mary have mercy merciful designs for you you must offer your prayers and sacrifices to god the most high and then he said in every way you can offer sacrifice to god in reparation for the sins by which he is offended and in supplications for sinners in this way you will bring peace to your country for i am its guardian angel the guardian the angel of portugal above all bear and accept the page with patience the sufferings god will send you so he was saying you know he was preparing the children for what is to come and he was and he was continuing or preparing for the message that mary would later give which was to pray for the sinners um okay to pray the rosary and to pray for the sinners for the conversion of the sinners and then late in uh, september or october 1916 the angel came again and this time the angel was holding in his left hand the chalice and this is actually very uh, beautiful because it actually even in many ways confirmed the miracle of the eucharist also and what what we receive is the body and blood of jesus uh, so here what happens with lucy is writing is the angel holding his left hand he had the chalice and um, and over it in the air was a host um and from the host drops of blood was falling into the chalice okay so the angel then leaves the chalice in the air and kneels with them and repeats um and tells them to repeat uh three uh the prayer three times and this is the prayer that said o most holy trinity father son and holy spirit i adore you profoundly and i offer you the most precious body blood soul and divinity of jesus christ present at all the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the outrageous sacrileges and indifferences by which he is offended and by the infinite mercy, merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of mary i beg conversion of poor souls and then the angel said to them eat and drink the body and blood of jesus christ terribly outraged by the ingratitude of men offer reparation for their sakes and console god uh, so it's again like a miracle in in which the confirmation of that what we eat is the body and blood of jesus um and again this is another the last of the miracles that they had and from now on the children were a bit more serious uh and taking that kind of like they were they they were more interested in being alone and praying uh the rosary and coming you know preparing themselves for uh what the angel had said to them okay so then almost eight months had passed uh since that last apparition uh lucy and Fa francisco and jacinta continued the practice what the angel had taught them especially the prayers that he had taught them 
and offering every sacrifice that they find in their daily lives as children, they'd offer it up to Lord as a sacrifice, you know, whenever someone says to them to do this or that, they'd always do that. And then May 13th, uh, a day like tomorrow, 1917, uh, they chose to pasture their sheep in a um, hilly depression owned by Lucia's father. And it's known as Cova da Ira or Cove of Irene. I don't know if Irene is over here. I'd like to know if that's why her name is Irene. I, you know, does that, is that why that name came about? Does it have to do with this, uh, this miracle? Um, She'll be joining us soon to let us know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll be good for I meant to ask her that. Uh, but anyway, it's spelled I-R-E-N-E. So it does, I think that's her spelling also. Um, and then over there, it was that the Blessed Virgin, under the title, Our Lady of the Rosary, appeared on six occasions in 1917. And for six of these occasions, Mother Mary appeared to all three of the children. But in 1920, then she appeared only to Lucia. Uh, and that was the seventh apparition of Mother Mary, but that was only to Lucia. And that was one where um, she got confirmation to join as a, as a sister to go and, you know, uh, to be uh, a religious uh, for, of all our life, okay? But we look at the six apparitions as such. Um, okay, so just before the apparition, as Jennifer had said, like the, uh, the state of the world at that time was really terrible. You know, you're a moment of the first world war, okay? It's raging in Europe. Um, and uh, and it's just uh, the savages from the warfare is the worst the world has ever seen. And then in Moscow, you have the communist revolution happening that would overturn uh, pretty much the uh, good part, half of the world at that time uh, with the uh, with the rejection of religion and this new kind of um, uh, um, uh, a way of living for, from Lenin and all, all, all of them in, 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 in communist Russia at that time. And it's in the midst of all of this, um, of this moral and social evil, which is not too far from maybe where we are now, 100 years after the message of Fatima, uh, that the message of Fatima then in 1917 was coming into. Okay. Uh, and so it was really important for that time. And Portugal even itself was going through this, like communism was taking hold over there. And um, and the the part and the people over there who were in in uh, government uh, organizations they don't want they wanted to do everything away with the church like and they wanted people to abandon that and come uh, um, into a true sense of communism like so May seventh or thirteenth of May they heard a lightning in the in a clear sky. And so this startled them and they were thinking it's going to rain. And what they did, they were saying, okay, we'll take the sheep away back home. And then suddenly there was a lady dressed in white, as Lucia describes it, shining brighter than the sun, giving out rays of clear and intense light, like a crystal glow goblet full of pure water when the fairy sun passes through it. So this was the, the image of uh, uh, the Mother Mary that they were getting. And then uh, Mary, and when they come in front of Mary, uh, Mary says, please do not be afraid. I am not going to harm you. And then uh, Mary says, I'm coming from heaven. And she gives this message. This is the first message she gives in, in, in the first apparition. She says, I want you to return here on the 13th of each month for the next six months. And at the same hour, uh, later I shall tell you who I am and what I what is it that I most desire. And I shall return here yet a seventh time. Okay, and uh, that seventh time, uh, she did say uh, that was only for Lucia but for the, the three of them for the six months, okay? And say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and to end the war. And this was the key message. This was repeated every time Mary came. And this was the key message she always said, say the rosary every day to bring peace to the world and end the war, okay? Then 13th of June, um, uh, she said the same, she said like this, I want you to come here on the, uh, this was the next apparition. She said, I want to come here on the 13th of the next month. I want you to continue saying the rosary every day. And for each one of the mysteries, my children, I want you to pray in this way, in this way. Okay. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Take all souls to heaven, especially those who are most in need. Um, a prayer most of you might know now 
uh, that we say um, after each uh, mystery. I want you to learn and read. Uh, I want you to learn, learn to read and write. And later I will tell you uh, what else I want of you, okay? Uh, so this was the, the next apparition, this was the message. And um, she said, and then uh, Lucia was the one who was always communicating with M Mary um, in all of the apparitions. And she, Lucia asks, uh, will we all come to heaven? Lucia just innocently asked and Mary replied, yes, I shall take uh, Jacinta and Francisco soon, but you will remain a little longer since Jesus wishes you to make me known and loved on earth. He wishes also that you to establish devotion in the world to the, my immaculate heart. So this was the purpose of Lucia then, um, okay? And then, uh, so as they came home, uh, they were, okay, after the first incident itself, they were they said, we're going to keep the secret. We're not going to say this to anyone, but little uh, Jacinta, she couldn't keep her the secret to herself. She went along and told it to her parents. And then her parents soon came to, uh, uh, to uh, Lucia's home and explained to her mother. And she was really startled. And she was like, like she knows what's going to happen. But uh, in a way, uh, actually, the first person to believe was Lucia's father. He was like, yeah, no, I believe what you say. And even uh, the, the cousins, uh, Francisco and... Jacinta, their parents also were kind of believing, but the mothers were not that believing. They were like uh, really a bit skeptic, especially uh, Lucia's mother. She really didn't understand why she's making up all of these lies and spreading it like, you know, because she was thinking of all that's going to happen to her child. She's going to be taken away, going to be put in prison. The family is going to strip off their land and, uh, you know, God knows what's going to happen. And they're barely making it every day. Uh, in the poverty or below poverty that they're living in, like at that time in Portugal. Uh, so she was concerned. So she was genuinely alarmed. And um, uh, and she, what she said is like, um, she's, uh, and it, not only really that this, they were continuing to go there, but uh, this was continuing to expand. But also another thing is actually June, um, June 13th was also a feast of uh, St. Francis of Padua, uh, especially in Portugal. Uh, it's a it's a, um it's a celebration. So they thought it's a it's a feast for children also. So all children go to the 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 church at that day, like, and they were expecting that the children wouldn't go there, but uh, she was really surprised that the three of them still went to the hill and waited for Mother Mary. And then and they did again have this experience of Mother Mary, and this time you know they it's a bit more of a revelation. And there were a few people who joined them also on that day. Um, the, with the second apparition, there was a, there was a few people who saw. They didn't see Mother Mary, but they saw the clouds and they saw a bit of a something something extraordinary in terms of nature of nature that's happening over there. Um, and so uh, she brought him to the priest, and the priest then said, "Okay, I believe that you might have a, had a spiritual experience, but it could possibly be a demonic experience that you're having over there, because the children were still not saying about the secrets or." what Mother Mary was speaking to them about, okay? Uh, so then Lucia was a bit startled, which is like, should I still, still go? Like, And so this was the next apparition, July 13th, because this was the one in which the secrets were revealed uh, to the children. Um, so this was the, this was the one, uh, she was a bit afraid to go to this, but eventually she did go there and she was there. And uh, again, Mother Mary said, you must come here every month and then in October. And now over here, Lucia asked, can you do a miracle so that everyone will believe and stop abusing us and all of this? Like, um, because, you know, everyone was making fun of them and in this town and no one was believing them. And they were facing, their own family was facing so much uh, uh, criticism because of this. Um, and so then she said, okay, can you, do a, can you do a miracle so that everyone believe? And she said, in October, I will tell you um, who I am and what I want, I will then perform a miracle so that many may believe. So she see, she gave this promise also to her, October th uh, 13th, this when the miracle will happen. Okay, so the first vision was the vision of hell. So basically, uh, they, uh, I'll just read it was I, what, what Lucy wrote over here is that we saw it was as if a sea of fire Plunged in this fire was demons and souls in human form, like transparent burning embers, all blackened and burnished bronze, um, floating about, without weight or equilibrium, amid shirks and gaunts of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. 
And when they saw this vision, they were screaming also. And people who were even there for that third apparition, they also confirmed that the girls were screaming, although they couldn't see why they were screaming because it was just an open land with the skies just a bit strange with the weather and everything just a bit strange like. The second secret was this. The secrets are all later revealed, okay? They were only later revealed when Lucia was asked to write them down. Um, okay, and then the second part of the secret was, um, Mary said, you've seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. It is to save them that God wants to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart. If you do what I tell you, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. And then this is the message that she said in the second part, that the war will end. But if men do not refrain from offending God, another and more horror, um, and a more terrible war will begin during the pontificate of Pius the 11th. When you see a night uh, that is lit by a strange and unknown light, and this occurred in January 28th, 1930. Uh, 38, which was the Second World War, you will know that it is a sign of God uh, that which gives you that he is about to punish the world with war and with hunger and by persecution of the church and the Holy Father. Okay, so she said that the First World War will end, uh, but there will be a terrible Second World War that will come uh, if people do not repent. Okay, uh, and then the third secret was one where she said, um, uh, sorry. Okay. The second, actually, the second secret will all. There's a bit more that continues. To prevent this, I shall come. I shall come to the world to and ask that Russia be consecrated to my immaculate heart, and I ask, and I shall ask that on the first Saturday of every month, communions of reparation be made in atonement for the sins of the world. If my wishes are fulfilled, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, then Russia will spread its her errors throughout the world, bringing new wars and persecution of the church. The good will be martyred and the Holy Father will have much to suffer. Her certain nations will be annihilated. But in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me and she will be converted and the world will enjoy a period of peace. In Portugal, the faith will always be pers persevered. Okay. And then the third part of the secret was this. That um, um, that the angel saw a flaming um, that an angel with a flaming sword was was coming, and he was going to devour the whole world, pointing onto Earth, saying, "Penance, penance, penance." And then this was stopped by the vision of Mary, um, the, um, and she was basically saying something similar to that whole. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, basically, I'm oh, sorry. Um, uh, and then, sorry, that there was, she saw an immense light uh, that is God, something similar to how people appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it. Uh, a bishop dressed in white. So this is the Holy Father. We had an impression that it was the Holy Father. Other bishops, priests, men, and women religions were going up the steep mountain on uh, at the top of which there was a big cross. Having reached the top mountain on his knees on the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him. And in the same way, they died one after the other, the bishops, priests, men and women religious and various lay people of different ranks and positions. So just a vision of uh, religious people being persecuted and especially that the Holy Father will be killed. So again, the third part of the secret was not revealed even later. Even the first two came, uh, came were revealed, but the third was kept a secret. Okay, it was only, um, I don't know when the third one was as such revealed, but uh, it was also kept as a secret. And people think that it was John Paul II's assassination that was mentioned as the third uh, secret that was later revealed, but Mother Mary protected John Paul II also. Okay. Um, and then finally, um, this was uh, the August apparition came. Uh, but over here, what happened was now that slowly the people, a lot of people were coming, the civil authorities became involved in this and they didn't want this to happen. And so uh, what happened was the mayor, the mayor or the administrator of that city came and arrested these children and put them in prison. So they were never able to go there on 13th of August. So even though uh, Mary came, so certain people gathered, a lot of people gathered as usual on that 13th August. But the children were not there on the 13th of August because they were in, in the prison. 
Um, and uh, a lot of these other people saw, as usual, the clouds and all of this uh, environmental changes as usual happening, but they couldn't, they couldn't see Mother Mary because she would have only revealed herself to the children. Um, and, uh, and then um, after this guy, he was perse he, the, the mayor, like he, the, he threatened them. He said he's going to kill them, uh, uh, you know, throw them in, in, uh, in, in um, like cook them alive and all of this. Um, and but the children said they're not going to reveal any of the secrets that were um, proclaimed to them. Like um, so, they were still so strong in their faith. And you can imagine, like you know, they he'd be taking one after the other. Um, you know, you'll think that the the brother or the other cousin will be like, oh no no no, please like they did, they, but they they were so um, they were so so strong in what Mother Mary asked them and the messages that they got. That they it will only be revealed in the right time, like so they kept that as a secret as Mother Mary uh, said to them. Okay, um, and then August nineteenth is when uh, the that apparition actually happened. It wasn't thirteenth. Well, it happened on the thirteenth for the other people, but they never saw Mother Mary. But August nineteenth, the three of them later saw uh, when they were uh, released from prison by the mayor. They saw Mother Mary again um, at the at a hillside, um, <clears throat> and this time, um, this time she said, "Come again, um, come again to Kova de Ira or the Cove of Irene, that hillside, on the thirteenth of next month, September. I mean, uh, uh, my child, and continue to say the rosary every day. In the last month, I will perform a miracle so that many may believe." Okay. And then uh, on the September apparition, there was over 30,000 people actually who were gathered uh, this time to see that September apparition. And, continue, um, and she said, continue to say the rosary, my children, say it every day, that the war may end. And in October, the Lord will come, as well as Our Lady of Sorrows and the Lady of Mount Carmel. St. Joseph will appear with the child Jesus to bless the world. In October, I will perform a miracle that many may believe. This was the message she said in September. And then the October, the last, the sixth apparition happened. And the night uh, of the 12th of October, it was heavy rainfall at that time. You know, heavy rainfall that the whole place was drenched. And uh, yet so many people poured into Fatima. Uh, people came by their food, carts, and even the car. Like so, so many places from Portugal and outside from hearing what was happening over there, they all came there. And when they all came there, what in, in, in eventually um, uh, they were delayed. The children were delayed coming over there. And then the people who were already there, they started criticizing, like, are you guys not punctual? Like, and Mother Mary doesn't, didn't arrive on time. Like, she always comes at that noon time, like, you know, and it was way past noon and she didn't come. So they were all skeptics over there and like just throwing abuse at them. Like, yeah, uh, then nothing's going to happen over here and all that. And so then slowly the children came. Uh, because, you know, of all what they were going through for so many months and uh, especially the night before and all. And they knelt down and they started to pray the rosary. And as usual, after a time, um, actually, when uh, it says like when the when the sun was just right above, so at, at, at its peak, uh, um, so, you know, in a way, in its high noon, uh, Mother Mary appeared, as she said. And um, she said, I want a chapel built here in my honor. I want to continue saying the rosary every day. The war will end soon. The soldiers will return to their homes. And she revealed who she is. And she said, I am the lady of the rosary. That was the title she, re she re revealed over there. And then what happened over there was uh, this phenomenon of the dancing sun, where more than 70,000 people um, saw what happened over there. And then as this was happening, the children, uh, there was two kind of visions. So the dancing sun and everything is what all those mass gathered over there, they saw, which happened for about 10 minutes. And then the children, the three of them, they actually saw St. Joseph and child Jesus first and Our Lady um, robed in the blue mantle uh, beside the sun. And St. Joseph and child Jesus was blessing because they were making their sign of the cross. They were blessing the whole earth. And then later, they saw uh, Our Lady, um, uh, um, Our Lady, um, uh, uh, which was the other, uh, sorry, um, Our Lady, Our Lady of Sorrows, uh, and again the same way, 
after that they saw um after that was vanished they saw our lady of mount carmel also coming okay and um so this was the whole vision which in which had happened over there like there there is so many eyewitness statements of what happened over there for the dancing sun i have a message that i just noted down that a doctor he is a phd doctor alminda gareth of Coimbra University that noted he was the most detailed of all the peep records that that I could find. So I thought it was most interesting um, to read it out. If you can bear with me, it's a bit long. He says, "I was looking at the place of the apparitions in a serene, if cold, unexpected um, ex expectation of something happening, and with diminished curiosity because a long time had passed without anything to excite my attention." Then I heard a shout from thousands of voices and saw the multitude suddenly turn its back and shoulders away from the point towards which up to now it had directed its attention and turned to look at the sky on the opposite side. It must have been nearly two o'clock by the legal time and about midday by the sun. The sun a few moments before had broken through the thick layer of clouds which hid it and shone clearly and intensely. I veered to the magnet, which seemed to be drawing all eyes, and saw it as a disc with a clean cut rim, luminous and shining, but which did not hurt the eyes. I do not agree with the comparison which I have heard made in Fatima. It was a dull silver disc. It was a clearer, richer, brighter color, having something of a luster of a pearl. It did not in the least resemble the moon or a clear night because I saw it and felt it to be a living body. It was not spheric like the moon, nor did it have the same color, tone, or shading. It looked like a glazed wheel made of mother, made of mother of pearl. It could not be confused either with the sun seen through fog, for there was no fog at that time because it was not okay, opaque, diffused, or veiled. In Fatima, it gave light and heat and appeared clean cut with a well-defined rim. The sky was molten and the light circus cloud with the blue coming through here and there. But sometimes the sun stood out in patches of clear sky. The clouds passed from the west to east and did not obscure the light of the sun, giving the Im impression of passing behind it. Though sometimes these flecks of white took off tones of pink and diaphragm blue, as they passed before the sun. It was a remarkable fact that once one could fix one's eyes on this bizarre of heat and light without any pain in the eyes or blinding of the retina. The phenomenon expect for two interpretations when the sun seemed to send out rays of refluent heat which obliged us to look away met, must have lasted about 10 minutes. The sun's disk did not remain immobile. This was not a sparkling of a heavenly body, for it spun around on itself in a mad whirl. Then suddenly one heard a clamor, a cry of anguish breaking from all the people. The sun, whirling wildly, seemed to loosen itself from the firmament and advanced threateningly upon the earth as if to crush us with its huge and fiery weight. The sensation during those moments was terrible. During the solar phenomenon, which I just described in detail, there was change in color in the atmosphere. Looking at the sun, I noticed that everything around was becoming darkened. I looked first at the nearest objects and then extended my glance further afield as, as, far, as, I, as far as the horizon. I saw everything uh, an amethyst color. Objects around me, the sky and the atmosphere were the same color. The oak tree nearby through a shadow of its color on the ground. Fearing that I was suffering from an affection of the retina, an implorable explanation because in that case, one could not see the things purple colored. I turned away and shut my eyes, keeping my hands before them to intercept the light. With my back still turned, I opened my eyes and saw that the landscape was the same purple color as before. The impression was not that of an eclipse, 
and while looking at the sun, I noticed that the atmosphere had cleared. Soon after, I heard a pleasant, a peasant who was near me shouting out in tones of astonishment, look, that, that lady is all yellow. And in fact, everything both near and far had changed, taking on the color of a old yellow damask. People looked as if they were suffering from jaundice. And I recalled a sensation of amusement at seeing them look so ugly and unattractive. My own hands were the same color. All the phenomena which I have described were observed by me in a calm and serene state of mind and without any emotional disturbance as it was for others to explain and interpret them. Um, so that was one of the most detailed. There were many other accounts of what happened and uh, how the eyewitnesses saw though of this. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that, that this was the miracle. I think for now, for us, anyway, 100 years on after this message of Fatima, as I was reading, and I was looking more on what the, uh, the church was um, kind of speaking over here. I think one of the main key things for us is the rosary has never lost its importance for us also. We are also going through a pandemic. Uh, these wars are always raging. Uh, at the moment, again, there's peace, um, fragile, um, which is always fragile, I suppose, between Israel and Palestine raging. And um, in our own um, many different places, like in our own country, maybe in Ireland, and in our own life situations, wherever we are spiritually, um, sin is definitely uh, taking its hold. Um, maybe by not receiving the sacrament uh, physically, um, as churches are um, closed, maybe in many other countries. Um, and for us, maybe not being able to come to the sacrament of reconciliation. Um, so I think for the message of Fatima to us is the same as it was to the girls uh, at that time and continues to be the same that we have to continue uh, proclaiming that Christ is the savior of the world and all people are to come to know him as the true savior of this world and of our lives. And as, the, as, as these, as these um, young children were canonized saints later, it was because of that holiness in life that they lived, as I said, during the last pandemic, the way that they prayed and conducted themselves in that pious way, in that way, so many were brought to faith like, and even all throughout these apparitions, people were putting petitions to these young girls to ask to Mary and they would put it to Mary and Mary would say, yes, I'll heal this lady or that lady, no, they'll have to pray the rosary, they'll have to do this. She, she'll give answers like that also. So, so many miracles were also happening all this time. So I think for us also is that like we pray, we can bring many other petitions along with us to Mary and she will hear our prayers and Whatever is the spiritual need for us, and not just for us, but for our families and friends, it will be heard. And more, more than that, whatever is raging, the evil that is raging in this world, will be brought into peace um, through the intercession of Mary. So that's the key thing, and that's the key message. Maybe wherever you are right now in your life, to pray the rosary and to continue to pray the rosary, it's a very powerful weapon uh, that brought peace to this world uh, for World War I and World War II. And will again for the many wars and whatever troubles that's going in our lives. So thank you. <laughs>